Welcome to the first of five videos for understanding and operating the address parsing tool. In this video, I'll give a brief description of address elements per the Wisconsin Parcel Initiative schema. Then, I'll discuss how to leverage the output of the address parsing tool to identify poorly constructed addresses. This is a conceptual level video and does not require the installation of the address parsing tool. We'll cover that in video number two. The address standards and formatting for the Wisconsin Partial Initiative were developed following the United States Thoroughfare, Landmark, and Postal Address Data Standard, which is endorsed by the FGDC. The address parsing tool is designed to best meet these standards, but it is understood that every full address site in its native form does not necessarily follow these standards. The tool is designed to interpret as much variation as possible but it's important to know a few things about addresses and the parsing tool in order to achieve the best results. We'll cover some of that right here. On the screen I've listed some example addresses and their subcomponents. As you can see, the address parsing tool has some flexibility interpreting specific components. Let's take a look at some examples on screen, such as unit ID. As you can see, unit ID can be recognized by the parser at the end of the address string like it typically appears. It can also be recognized after the address number and preceding the street name, such as in this example. Unit ID can also follow variations of alphanumeric and special character combos. In these two examples, unit ID is preceded by the pound sign. Yet, in this address example, unit ID is recognized as unit C. Slight deviations from the acceptable formats may lead to incorrectly parsed addresses. Addresses missing vital components, such as an address number, can also lead to an incorrect parse. The tool is designed to handle as much of this as possible, but it's still important to understand what each subcomponent of an address means when validating the parse results. It's recommended that you study this graphic to understand some examples of what the individual address elements are. The address parsing tool is a semi-automated process. Our user is required to interpret flags and errors thrown by the tool, while clean and well-formatted site address datasets may have very few flags or errors upon the first execution of the tool. A typical address dataset may contain many more. These flags and errors are most typically caused by erroneous addresses, but could also be caused by anomalies in the parsing tool's logic. The address parsing tool is very sensitive to the inclusion or location of non-alphanumeric characters. It is important to note a few specific situations where a character has special treatment, and the user must use their discretion in choosing what to do with the address. Let's start by talking about hyphens. Hyphens can be indicative of an address number range, such as this example, 2554-2580 Johnson Street. This indicates a range of addresses on Johnson Street. This is an unacceptable address within the parcel project schema, as it is a range of addresses, not a single address. In some cases, hyphens may exist in acceptable addresses, such as this example a hyphenated street name, 2554 Prairie View Street. Prairie View is the street name, and it's acceptable to have a hyphen in there. Another acceptable example is a unit ID indicating several units at a site address. 2554 Johnson Street Apartment 30 through 40 indicates several units within one site address. Let's talk about forward slashes now. Forward slashes can be indicative of several unacceptable addresses, including this one. Street intersections such as Main Street slash Johnson Street, which annotates the intersection of two streets, is not a parcel site address adhering to the parcel schema. Similarly, multiple site address listings such as 2554 Johnson Street slash 20 Horde Street, which annotates two addresses, is not acceptable. Forward slashes can be acceptable in some cases, and some examples of this include what's highlighted here. Fractional street names, 
This is an acceptable address and acceptable use of the forward slash. Other acceptable examples include fractionals in the unit ID. This example, 2554 Johnson Street, unit 1 forward slash 4, is an acceptable address. Now let's talk about the pound sign. The pound sign is not acceptable for any purpose other than within the unit ID. Here's an example of how the pound sign could be used within the unit ID in an acceptable address. 2554 Johnson Street, apartment number 4. The use of the pound sign in an example such as this is unacceptable. Leveraging the address parsing tool's output error and flag indicators, such as the special characters field, is the most efficient way to identify incorrect address parses. Another useful field is the extraneous data flag field. This field contains data from the original site address that the parser was unable to assign to an address element that fits the schema. In most cases, this data should be removed from the site address. The most common types of data in this field are property descriptors and portions of address number ranges. In some cases, it is possible the parser incorrectly placed an acceptable element into this field. Changes to an incorrect parse should be made during the final step of the parsing process. Another piece of output data that can be leveraged is the tool summary tables. These tables give a list of unique elements found in each newly parsed field and can be very useful when trying to identify incorrectly parsed elements. Doing this will be detailed in the fifth video. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next video where we'll teach you how to install the tool.